Wait, remember Hot Wheels Acceleracers? It's the follow-up movie series to Hot Wheels World Race, which we just covered in another video. Continuing on from the same continuity set up from World Race, Acceleracers would further the adventures of Vert Wheeler and the others as the Hot Wheels world built here expands. The Acceleracers series would be comprised of four movies in total, Ignition, Speed of Silence, Breaking Point, and Ultimate Race, with all of them coming out over the course of 10 months in 2005. Since there was a two-year gap from World Race to the start of Acceleracers, the movie series here would also start us off two years later in Universe. Today, let's take a look at the Acceleracer series for Hot Wheels, see how it continues the story further, how it became such a popular brand, and what happened to it in the end. Welcome back to the 25 Days of Fringe Miss, where there's going to be brand new- Wait, 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 wait. Uh-uh. Ah. Double Fringe Miss. Aw, you only thought you were gonna get 25 videos this year? Look at you. You look silly. But I'm here to fix that because I'm going to give you not only 25 videos, but I'm giving you 50 videos. I have two channels. That's two Fringe Misses. Each day there'll be a brand new video on both channels for 25 days. I haven't slept in months. Enjoy the content. Or don't. The movies themselves would be about an hour long each, and aside from really banking on the straight-to-home video market to sell each movie, they would also premiere on Cartoon Network as well. Right after World Race was over, plans were moving forward to develop Acceleracers, wasting no time to make sure that they can keep building off the brand they established for the 35th anniversary of Hot Wheels, and make it a full-on brand beyond that. World Race would introduce us to the concept of high-speed races with tricked-out cars that can enter into another dimension to race along insane tracks built by the mysterious Accelerons fast car action and sci-fi all mushed together with the early use of CG animation. Acceleracers would take that and start blending the sci-fi aspect into it even more. I mean, who doesn't like racing, aliens, other dimensions, and large expanding plots, right? So let's jump into what the series is all about. There is a larger scope here with other characters than just Vert and some of the returning racers that get the focus in this film series. But we start things off back in Highway 35 as we see that Dr. Tesla, after continuing his studies on the Wheel of Power post the events of World Race, is trying to stop Galorum, who has returned, and along with her is an army of even more powerful robots as they end up capturing the Wheel of Power and nearly killing Dr. Tesla before he is able to escape, ejecting himself from the other dimension as Galorum takes over Hot Wheels City as her new base of operations. So once this is set, we jump back to where the other races are at, saying that there are two rival street racing teams out there, Teku and Metal Maniacs. Among them are the returning characters of Vert, Taro, Kurt, and his brother Mark, and as they are racing, Dr. Tesla Tesla's robot assistant Gig comes around to ask them for their help, heading back to the facility where the world race started, with some of the new racers we are just getting introduced to coming along. But seeing that the state that it's in, there's actually a new facility called the Acceladrome that Brian shows back up and brings them all to. Dr. Tesla greets their return, explaining more about this research regarding the Accelerons and informing them of what took place with Galorum, catching them up to speed. The biggest problem with Galorum having control over the Wheel of Power is that she also has control over the portals that lead in and out of the dimension. Another fact that we learn is that the Wheel of Power has all of these symbols over it, with each of them representing the different racing realms. First Hot Wheels Acceleracers movie now on DVD. Survive. Galorum's army has scattered themselves throughout the realms that is trying to collect what are known as Accela Chargers, and those are granted to the winners of a race in each realm. It's more than just a symbol of status though, as they end up giving the winner's car a special power-up that gives it the perks of weathering any of the conditions within that specific realm it was won in. At the Acceladrome, there is a representation of the Wheel of Power that acts in conjunction with the real one, opening a portal to the exact realm that is being opened as now they will have to speed around a twisting track to hit 300 miles per hour to then get brought into this new realm activated, and try to stop Galorum from getting the Accela Chargers. But not everything is brought up and explained to the racers, as it gets alluded to something worse being at stake here. The realms only stay open for one hour whenever they are opened up, and if you don't make it out within that hour, you're apparently stuck there. And they learn this the hard way, right away. As they start dealing with Galorum's army in the realms, battling it out with Car-V drone combat, their other problem first may just be themselves, as there are a lot of clashing personalities, but also something else. And I'm not just talking about the giant bugs and alien creatures they come across in these realms, but rather a third-party entity that shows up going against both our hero racers and Galorum's army, known as the Silencers. They are shown operating much like a tightly disciplined and trained group, complete with uniforms and similar technology to mimic getting into the realms themselves. With their ability to camouflage themselves and disguise themselves, they're able to operate in plain sight and even cause more division amongst our main racers here on purpose that can lead to their own downfall as the main group starts 
start figuring this out after an intense run-in with the silencers that exposed them. None of this discredits Galorum's evilness as after having Brian captured for a while and seemingly held as hostage, we see that once she has ended up capturing Mark, she presents him with Brian as he is now, a part machine similar to her robot army that is directly under her command, which is pretty messed up. It then gets revealed that more friends and other associates to our racers have been captured with them never knowing the truth so as not to discourage them with nothing possible to be done about it. This doesn't stop Kurt once he knows about this from settling the differences between Teku and Metal Maniacs as they go around Dr. Tesla to operate a rescue mission instead of focusing on the Accela Chargers. And after Vert suffers a leg injury before this revelation, he now stays out of the racing to confront Dr. Tesla when he discovers what they're doing. Together, all the drivers in the race successfully fight against and take over one of Galorum's robot sweeper vehicles, bringing the fight directly to her. But unbeknownst to them, Galorum seems to have the information needed from her hostages to take a full-on assault to the secret hidden location of the Accelodrome to attack the base and isn't too worried what happens to the other drivers heading to her base of operations. But the big reveal happens when Gig, Dr. Tesla's robot assistant, is revealed to be one of the silencers, as one of their racers was also hiding in the Accelodrome. While Dr. Tesla claimed earlier that the silencers had been the ones stealing their technology, Gig claims that Dr. Tesla was once a part of the silencers and was stealing their technology from them. But the battle on Earth while the other drivers are at Galorum's HQ gets more complicated when Galorum's forces actually show up, leaving Vert to be the one to deal with this three-way conflict directly, even in an injured state. As Galorum comes face to face with Dr. Tesla after her forces have taken the Accela Chargers and have cornered everyone but Vert and that one silencer member in the Accelodrome, Glorum goes on about her purpose for all of this, needing enough Accela Chargers to pass the ultimate test that are the racing realms themselves to become a true Acceleracer and be proven great enough to race the Accelerons as she wants to defeat them. All the Accela Chargers combine their energy, opening the final portal with all of the different symbols on the wheel lit up. Glorum hops in a car and starts her entrance into the portal as Vert causes a distraction for her army so he can take his whip and follow in pursuit of her, being able to get past more of them thanks to the secret help of the mysterious Silencer's member who is blending in for some reason. Hmm interesting. Vert has to put all of his racing skills to the test as he races behind Galorum, as this race acts as a tour of all the different realms, leading them to the answers of it all. Meanwhile, with the other racers, Kurt ends up getting to where his brother was being held, only to be cornered by this new robot Brian. But when Kurt's back is against the wall here, his estranged relationship with his younger brother doesn't matter anymore to keep them distant, and Mark escapes from his holding to attack Brian and get into the fight himself. The Acceleracers! CartoonNetwork.com forward slash Hot Wheels. Mark's only been slightly altered by the robots, but isn't under Galorum's control just yet. At one point, Kurt tries what he can to save Brian, but the end of the fight sees Brian letting himself fall from a high ledge, seemingly to his death after exclaiming that Brian is gone. Vert and Galorum end up neck and neck by the end of the race, rushing towards the gateway to the Acceleron's world, as he tries to stop her from getting through it first, resulting in a crash. At this moment, an Acceleron exits the portal, with Galorum demanding what she believes she's owed, for collecting the Accela Chargers and completing the realms. But the Acceleron tells her that Vert completed the realms to get to this point without the Accela Chargers aiding him to do so, which was the real test all along, calling Vert the true Acceleracer, giving him a new outfit, which, hey, that's pretty cool, causing Galorum to lose it, transforming herself into a large robot, picking him up by the neck, and ready to kill him, but the Acceleron intervenes, throwing Galorum into the void and inviting Vert into the Acceleron's world. But Vert is left with a tough choice here, helping the rest of the drivers with the use of the Accela Chargers as they have been captured, or going forward with the Acceleron, as Dr. Tesla claims that this is what it's been all about. The Acceleron reveals his face as Vert says that he needs to help his friends, and they seem to be at an understanding of wisdom and respect, giving Vert a direct portal out of there and saying that when Vert as an Acceleracer returns, he won't be alone. Which in a way makes Vert's whole arc from the beginning of World Race feel more meaningful from him being a lone wolf to now being a member of a team, having people that he cares about and would risk his own life for any day. Vert shows up just in time to aid the others back at the Accelodrome, as the robots are programmed to destroy all the humans. After an all-out brawl, Dr. Tesla makes the call to stay behind to activate a self-destruction feature to take out the rest of the robots as well as the Accelodrome itself, which would cost him his own life having to stay behind and activate it. But Gig steps in and forces Dr. Tesla to escape to safety while he sacrifices himself. This left just enough time for Vert to go through the portal before it was destroyed, as he ends up at the Silencer's base of operations. As the 
the other drivers don't know where Vert along with the Accela Chargers with him had gone, they team up to find where their missing racer and friend is. Vert is then confronted by the silencers with the one racer from them that was also in the Accelodrome earlier removing his helmet, revealing that it was Vert's father the whole time and tells him that they need to talk. And that's it. That's the end of Acceleracers as a series of movies from where the story goes. Yep, one of the biggest reveals after all was said and done and just set up for what comes next all ends on a cliffhanger that would sadly never come. There were clearly plans here for a continuation, at least a big wrap up part 5 finale, but the film series was cancelled. There's a lot of information out there about what potentially happened that led to why it was cancelled, but it's pretty hard to point at one of them and say, yeah, that's the real reason right there. This had led to many fans of the series for years discussing this and trying to dig into the answers to get some sort of clarity. Even going beyond that, some fans have taken to trying to develop their own conclusion for the Acceleracer series. Some of the information out there that potentially has some answers is following the thread of what would come next, like the use of established ideas and full-on patents being taken and used to develop the toy side of things with the Stunt Strikers series, which came out as a McDonald's toy line in 2007, and then beyond that, after more morphing of the ideas here, led to the creation of Hot Wheels Battle Force 5, a TV series that wouldn't have a real connection to World Race and Acceleracers outside of the main character being Vert Wheeler. I've already covered that on the channel a while back if you're interested in diving into that series. In 2016, the thirst for more information about what happened to Acceleracers was strong. Heck, it still is today, but in February of that year, a Reddit user named Racing Drones posted on the Acceleracers subreddit that he reached out to people who were involved with the series in some way, and received a response back from a Mattel employee who wanted to remain anonymous, so take the next statement here with a grain of salt, as all this could be a possible reason for Acceleracers coming to an abrupt ending. Part of the Mattel employee's response stated, Really what happened is the marketing team changed right in the middle of the project, and they felt it had become more popular than the Hot Wheels brand itself, so they were concerned about it killing Hot Wheels. In my honest opinion, I thought that was crap. They rotated the marketing team so much at Mattel it killed so many good projects, and proved to cause us a lot of frustration. But anyways, on the continuing story of Acceleracers, we were exploring the options of transforming cars. Basically, all the stuff we designed and concepted ended up being used in Battle Force 5. So, take that for what you will. Now I can get a Hot Wheels toy and my McDonald's Happy Meal. It honestly really sucks when something so beloved ends on a massive cliffhanger, and this series of movies built up a massive fan base thanks to how well it was done, continuing to build even bigger than World Race was. The story was a lot darker than most people expected, and from that, it didn't try to water down anything for the sake of it, and instead focused on delivering the best story that fit. This time around, compared to World Race, the action is elevated to more extreme levels that rival the ridiculousness of what the Fast and Furious series would eventually become. The races are more dangerous, the hazards on the track are more dynamic, and the fighting feels more intense. But even in having a longer and in my opinion more interesting story than what came before, the best thing in the series is the characters themselves. From how we see them evolve, starting off with who they were two years later from World Race to where they finish off at the end of Acceleracers. Vert's whole story here is still heavily focused on, and of course, in the end, you see how he no longer works alone and truly cares for the other racers with no selfish motivations. But what Acceleracers really gets right is how it gives proper focus to everyone else, from returning racers of World Race, and even the new ones as well. Kurt and Mark's storyline had continued on from where it left off as Mark went down a bad path from there, keeping him at odds with his older brother as Kurt is a lot more redeemable in his attitude and action for caring for Mark, and just as a person in general. I think one of the most emotionally driven subplots in the series is between two characters from rival teams, Nolo and Torque. There is a specific event that keeps getting flashed back to that involves Nolo's brother other Tone, who while in a race with Torque ends up coming around a sharp turn too hard and ends up crashing, resulting in a fiery explosion taking Tone's life. Albeit, the animation for it shouldn't be this funny, because it is a significant and emotionally driven event for Nolo, but still, it's kind of funny. That's not me being negative to this specific part, I just think the animation for it was funny. I still love this subplot as it progresses from here. Nolo believes that this was all Torque's fault, forcefully causing Tone to crash, and since there is a bitter hatred held by Nolo towards Torque. 
Torque. As this starts to get explored and they have to be around each other when it comes to the races, Torque even feels bad for what happened, nearly thinking that what if it was truly his fault that caused this to happen. This still ends up in them clashing over these strong emotions with Nolo finding it nearly impossible to accept that his brother just mishandled the turn and got into the accident. Despite how Nolo feels, Torque's brotherly nature underneath his rough and tough exterior starts shining through as he begins looking after Nolo like a brother, even risking his own safety for Nolo's and I like how together these two develop their bond through grieving and feuding over a tragic loss, a loss that clearly affected them both. Another relationship between two characters that was pretty fun just because it always felt wholesome and silly was between Porkchop and Monkey. Together they carry a lot of the more comedic moments as they end up always doing things as a pair, especially towards the later half of the series with the highlight being anything that involved the jacking of the robot sweeper vehicle. Speaking of the vehicles quickly, because part of this was also to sell you the larger world of Hot Wheels Acceleracers toys, they were pretty freaking cool. The special additions that they would get for them to perform some cool maneuvers or traverse the tracks felt a lot more expansive and creative than what we saw in World Race. I don't have much to really say about them other than that. They were cool and they did cool things, and it made the races so dynamic and action-packed to watch. This Double Fringe Miss is brought to you by Gamer Subs. Ah, did I scare you? Probably not. But what should scare you is paying 10% more when you don't have to. You're supporting Gamersups, you're supporting me, and if you use code FRINGE, you get 10% off. You don't gotta pay that 10%. And if you're paying that 10%, I'm looking at you like this. Why? Code FRINGE. Going back to some more of the character stuff, I feel that Brian really kind of gets the short end of the stick here, as his true fate is never revealed aside from seeing him fall off the high building beam. While it is dark and was a pretty good twist that left the consequences of the dangers they all were facing feel real, I do feel that there was more left for what would have happened to him. Also, the mystery of the accelerons is a big open-ended question mark. While being vague and only giving little detail to keep your imagination and questions going can be a good thing, there was just never a solid enough payoff or continuation for what the one Acceleron we did meet says about Vert returning. It feels like there is so much lore left that wasn't able to be explored, and for all of the fans who have been left in the dark for nearly two decades since the film series came out, I understand why you're so passionate about this series, and why the hunt for the truth or need for a conclusion is so loud. I doubt that we will see anything come from the Acceleracers world in the form of another film, but it's nice to see the community built from it all form from something so unique and interesting like a film series that blended toy cars with aliens and robots, and as a lover of all that is sci-fi, I'm all in for it. So to those still out there creating content about Acceleracers, or trying to develop full-on conclusions to the series, or seeking out the real truth about what happened to it, keep the dream alive. Acceleracers was a really incredible series of films that have reached my inner child to feel so nostalgic for my time collecting Hot Wheels cars when I was younger, a collection that I still have today. Acceleracers is full of imaginative ideas that all came together really well, and I appreciate the effort it took to make these films way more than just some form of cash grab that's attached to a legacy brand. The series has so much style to it, so much heart, and the only thing it's missing is a proper conclusion. I would love to know your thoughts on Acceleracers, what you think of the series in general, what you would have liked to see in the conclusion, what you think truly happened that caused it to end. Let me know in the comments below. I've been Jordan Fringe, thanks so much for watching, like and subscribe, later.